Good morning, everybody. Feels like it's been forever since I've made a video, which it seems I think it has. But anyway, I want to wish you guys a happy new year. Um, sorry I wasn't here yesterday, but um, yeah, life happens sometimes. So I'm just going to do two, two uh, videos today, and then I'll be all caught up, and you guys will be back on track. Um, today's daily pattern from patterncollections.com. If you guys aren't familiar with where I'm getting these pattern uh, daily patterns, it's pattern-collections.com. And I'm in under the uh, daily focus patterns um, section. And they're, uh, they are laid out by date. Um, let me go back. Let's see if I can go back one and show you. See how they're laid out by date? These are all the ones we've done since the beginning of the Daily Focus, which started. Let me go all the way back to the bottom. Ooh, there we go. We started doing this July 17th is when the group decided to start doing daily patterns and we've been doing them ever since. So this is pretty cool. Um, there are plenty of patterns out there. It will be a long time before we do some of them over again unless uh, the people who are uh, making the decisions on which patterns to do think that there's just one that they really want to do over again. But Anyway, so I'm on, on here and then I just click on the one on the date, the correct date. And um, there you go. Then you get to the step out. Um, so this one is called Olin or All In by Smita Toke. It's a relatively simple one. Um, looks like it's going to be fun to do. Um, first you start out with, um, oh, just lost my... Lost my blending stump on the floor. Oh well. Uh, two parallel lines. Let's see if I can get this so there's no glare. Uh, and then you do this sort of a S shape that's aurad, right? Or or um, shattered. I don't know. I call it aurad. Some people don't. They they call it something else, and I don't know what they call it. And then. Um, from the top of one of the S shapes on the right to the bottom of the left S shape, you make a diagonal. And then on this side of the diagonal, you do these arcs going upward. And the other side of the diagonal, you do arcs, but you tuck it down into this corner. So they're not right next to each other, but they're offset. Okay. So you always start tucked into the corner of the S at the bottom. And it looks like that. And then when you do a bunch of them together, they make this awesome sort of pillowish shape thing, which I think is very, very cool. Okay. So that's what we're aiming for. And I think I'm going to do some sort of shape to do this in. So I'm going to um, start with my pencil. I got it nice and sharp since it's been such a long time since I drew anything. Nice and sharp pencil. I'm going to make myself my little border. My paper kind of curled up on me. Storing my papers. Kind of made my, I'm moving my supplies all around. Wasn't always the best thing here, but all right, so I'm going to do some sort of shape. I think maybe I want to make an S sort of shape as my guide. You guys can't see that. I'm too far away. It's going to take me a little bit to get back into the groove of how to do my drawings because, um, yeah, it's just been a while. And you'll notice I've got a new color background. I decided that every so often, maybe once a quarter or so, I will change my background. Uh, that helps me to find my videos and my pictures on my files because it just makes it easier. It's like, oh yeah, that was on a purple background. So 
Anyway, I'm gonna do that. I think, I think I'm gonna go ahead and ink in. I don't always ink in my square first, but you guys know that. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel, um, I wanna thank you for visiting and coming and checking us out. Uh, I have recently hit that 2,000 mark for subscribers, and you still have a couple of days to uh, find the 2,000 subscriber celebration video and then comment below, not on this one, but on that one, to be entered into the uh, drawing for some of my artwork. I'm going to do this, which echoes the uh, shape of, of what we're doing. I think that will, will really complement it. Um, I think on one side, I'm going to do them in a different scale than the other. And I'll just do a couple of different rows. Uh, I think on this side, I'm going to make my parallel lines going this way and going rather far apart. Like so. And I think on this side, I'm going to have them go this way and I'm going to have them closer together. And I, that will give them two different looks while still using the same pattern. I like that kind of puffy look that, that comes out of that pattern with having them all in a rows like that. So we'll see what happens. And then you wanna make that sort of S kind of a shape. It's not completely an S. It's just sort of a, a lazy S like that. And do this aura so that they're I don't like that. I'm gonna put one here, just so we have a reference. And I'm not gonna line them up, I'm gonna do them, you know, brick kind of like, where you go every in between. But I'm not gonna measure, and some of them may be closer than others, and that's okay. Okay, I want end of one here. Something like that. Um, for those of you who are new, just, just, I'm, I've had some questions uh, from new people of what uh, supplies I use. I do have a supply video back in uh, way at the beginning of beginner lessons of the things that I'm using, but uh, the ones I'm using right now, my my pencil is just a simple Royal Graphite pencil. It's an HB, which is similar to a number two pencil. It's the one I like um, based on the paper that I'm using. I'm just using cut out squares out of a sketchbook. It's sort of a medium weight, um, I think it said 75 pound paper on the sketchbook. Um, just a regular old standard pencil. This just happens to be one out of a set of drawing pencils that my son had uh, was required to purchase for a class, for art class, and he no longer is doing art because that was just one of the classes he had to take to finish his education. And he is not an artist. He is a uh, person who is into computers and um, he's going for his systems administration degree. And I use just a, uh, a Pigma Micron 01 size pen. You can use different sizes. Uh, you can use different pens. I like this one. Um, coming up sometime soon, I will be doing a, I've already done a white pen review. I will be doing a black pen review because um, for Christmas, I got an abundance of really great black pens of different brands that I've never tried before. So I will go ahead and do a black pen review as well. Um, but right now, that's what I'm using is the standard uh, Zentangle suggested Pigma Micron 01 size. But you use whatever you uh, are comfortable with, you know. A little 
little S shapes. All right, so those are the little S shapes going that way. And I'm gonna do little S shapes going this way. I think I'll start up here. I might even do this S the other direction. Can I do this S backwards? Will I be able to do a backwards S? Sure. I'm gonna do backwards S's here. And I'm gonna do these closer together. Just because I know that's gonna give it a different look than on the other side. And I'm just doing variations. Um, you don't always have to follow the step out exactly as it's shown. You can do different things. The step out gives you an idea of how to draw this tangle, but it's not set in stone. There's nothing set in stone. Uh, none of the, the Zentangle methods, well, well, I take it back. In official Zentangle, there are some things that are set in stone. One of those items is, you know, no pencil, no erasing. If you feel more comfortable planning out your pattern ahead of time and using a little pencil, you know, I'm not going to stop you. There is no Zentangle police. You just do whatever feels comfortable for you. I'm comfortable with just digging right in with pen. I think that gives me a layer of challenge that I, that I need to um, be able to just kind of let go and let things do what they're going to do without getting all bogged down in, in what is uh, right and wrong. And, you know, I just, the, the tiles just kind of grow as, as they will. And that's, that's part of the joy of Zentangle for me, is the, um, letting the tiles just kind of do what they or want to do, you know. Okay, so these ones the S's are going one way, these ones the S's are going another. These ones the S's are uh, alternating in a brick-like pattern. These ones, they're closer together so they, they seem to be forming more of like a river or a ribbon. Just doing them differently, just to break up and make things look different on different sides of my tile. That's the only reason, though, no, no rhyme or reason to it. This side's going to be more like the step out. This side's going to be different. It's okay. So on these, we're going to go from the top to the bottom of the S's. So diagonally this way. Diagonally this way. Top to bottom. And I like when I'm doing a pattern. Most of the time, I will do the whole, all of one step, and then I do all of the next step. Rather than doing an S and then a line and then an S and then a line, I did all the S's first, then all the lines next. You know, if you don't do it that way, nobody's going to come. There's, there's no, like I said, there's no Zentangle Police. You, you do it however makes you happy and gives you the less, least amount of stress. That's all. Simple. I'm just going to leave that line as the, 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 the diagonal. They kind of look like half a Hershey kiss. Got Hershey kisses on the brain. Got a lot of them for Christmas. Okay. Uh, so these ones I'm going to go the other way because I did the S the other way. Did I do the S the other way? <laughs> I did not. I did not make a backward S. You're silly, Dawn. That's an S. It's not a backwards S. A backwards S would be going this way. I said I was doing a backwards S and then did not draw a backwards S. All right, so erase that, what I said. 
See, part of, part of the way I, I do my videos is the same way I draw my tangles. I just start and I go and whatever happens, happens. I think I will, though, however, make my diagonals go the other way, which will give it a different kind of a look. I was going for different, and I didn't didn't achieve that, did I? Well, I did with the spacing. So there we go. I've, I've divided up my, my tile. Some of it's going that way, some of it's going the other way. Looking good. Okay, so on this side of this one, let's look, let me look at my, at my sample here. Here, tucked into this corner, I wanna make like that. I can zoom in a little if you want. And just do little arches, filling up this triangular space. When you run out of room, just keep going that way. See? Like that. And then you do another one, but you tuck it over into this corner. And it's more roundy because the corner's a different shape. Rather than more teardrop, it's a more of a roundy shape. And just fill it in and continue it in like that. So, on this side of this is the teardrop. And on this side is the more roundy. And then this one would be the more roundy coming this way. This one's the teardrop. This one would be the more roundy coming off this direction. Right? Roundy. Remember with a, a micron pen, you really need to hold your, your pen like straight up and down. And that I know sometimes my hand will, will cover where I'm drawing, but that's just because I need to, I need to hold my pen straight up and down. Um, some people have commented that it looks like I'm like strangling my pen and I'm not. I'm holding it very lightly, um, but I do have to hold it straight up and down. If I hold it at an angle like this, it doesn't write. So this one here is the more teardroppy shape. And these teardrops and roundy kind of shapes are reminiscent of a pattern called cockles and mussels that um, is an older pattern. Uh, I don't remember if it's an official pattern or not. There are officials and tangle patterns, which on this site we mostly don't do. Um, PatternCollections.com is more collecting patterns that other people have um, created and have submitted. They're not the Zentangle official patterns. Uh, most of them we don't have the uh, permission to put on the website, so we're probably not going to do them in a daily focus pattern.
Okay, and a roundy one over here. This is quite fun. So, like I said, I've been off for a few days because of Christmas and New Year's and um, hope you guys had some time to spend with family. I had family that stayed in my house for a week and so it was chaotic around here. It's not a horrible bad thing. It's just different and um, my son just loves the the all the chaos and noise and, and somebody to always play a board game with. Uh, he took the, the week off of work between Christmas and New Year's, so he had all this time to be with his cousins, and that was awesome. I did not have the same luxury. I worked on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I worked on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So, um, yeah, I didn't have that same luxury. Um, and I'm, it actually surprises me I do these the YouTube videos because I'm really an introvert. And I really needed the, the time to have some quiet time here at home. With nobody home, just me. And just uh, kind of chilling out. I need that for my own mental well-being. All the chaos is just really hard on me. So I'm looking forward to the next couple of weeks of taking some downtime. Um, drawing helps me with that. It helps me quiet my mind and and get rid of all that. chaotic stress that happens in my brain. So this will be really good to get back to drawing on a regular basis. Instead of putting a whole bunch of them onto video all at once, I am going to try to do like I was doing before, which is only two or three tangles ahead just so that I have a few um, ready to go in case life happens and I can't get to drawing every day. But I'm going to really try to draw every single day. Let's see, this is gonna need some sort of something here. Just going to put a few random little lines just to fill that space right there in the corner. I don't want to leave it blank, but there's not enough room there to really do the pattern. So I'm just going to fill it with a little bit of little bit of lines. Now I could fill some of these in every other one and do a little bit of sparkle. Um, could do that. Not sure that that's where I want to go with it. I really like this sort of puffy thing that's that's happening here, and I think I want to emphasize that with the with the shading and the pencil. Um, there should be a, an S in here. No, that's not right. Okay, it should come from here, huh? The, the, should be coming from down in there somewhere.
All right. Yep, something like that. It's hard to do in the corners, I've just discovered. But I really like what's happening here. That's, that's really, I, I really like that. I think it's pretty. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, on this one, since I've already done it a little different, I wanna say backwards, but it didn't end up backwards, but I have done these triangle bits backwards. I think I'm going to do just the, this, the, this shape, but I'm gonna tuck them in to each of the corners going different directions. And I'll see what that ends up looking like. So because of my oddball work schedule, we ended up doing Christmas four different times with different groups of people. So how awesome was that? Be able to kind of extend our holiday. I thought it was nice because I didn't have to contend with everybody all at once although the one big group was as expected and we I think we ended up with a total of 30 that evening we had uh, a Christmas with just my family just the, the three of us and then we had a Christmas with um, all of the brothers and sisters and cousins and such on my husband's side of the family. That was the, the big 30 group. Um, and then we had the following day we had a nice quiet Christmas with my parents and then um, just yesterday which is why I couldn't draw yesterday we had a delightful potluck and Christmas with friends mostly from church but not all from church And that was a group of about, I'm trying to think, 20, 16, 18, something like that. So I am very, very blessed to have spent the holidays with all those people that I know and love. I feel extraordinarily grateful that I have that many people in my life that uh, that scheduling holidays is actually challenging because of how many people I know that that's actually awesome you know that's a real blessing uh, you know the gifts are fun and and it's hilarious to see what some people choose for you um, and how they react to things that you've chosen for them but it's not really the gifts it's the spending time together you know last night we we played a dice game called Bunko I don't know not all of you will have ever heard of it but that was fun um, I really wasn't in the mood for playing games, but I played anyway, and then I ended up having a really good time. Um, 
and then just hanging out. Oh, I forgot. Christmas Day. Oh, I, I guess I had another one. All right. That one was with uh, church friends on Christmas Day after work. So I guess I had uh, one, two, three, four. I had five Christmases this year. That I, I'm just so blessed. And as much as I need my downtime, I also appreciate and recognize when we have family and friends that, that uh, you know, I have a blessing beyond what I feel like I deserve. just hoping that you guys also had time to be with those who you love whether it's family or friends you know to me um, it really doesn't make that much difference my family my friends are my family my family are friends of mine so it's all for me the same If I didn't want these people in my life, they wouldn't be. I would just choose not to hang out. And of course, there's time also during the season to uh, think about those who are no longer here and that's sad. But at the same time, we were able to, you know, really tell stories and say, you know, Grandpa would have really loved this. And this is in memory of someone we've lost in the past few years. And, uh... And for the most part, it's not something that, that creates tears anymore. It's something that we can celebrate their life and, and joke about what they would or would not have been doing if they were here with us. And Always good to remember those who aren't with us anymore. It does help the healing, you know. Ignoring the fact that they're not there doesn't help the healing. Helping the healing is acknowledging that they're not there and that you miss them and that they would be having a good time too. I got this awesome Christmas card from... pastor friend who lost his wife in the early part of the year. He said in his Christmas card that the day after his wife's passing and, and he'd been, you know, preparing himself for it because she she had Alzheimer's and it it just ravaged her, you know. And so it wasn't unexpected, but it still was shocking if that makes any sense and he was grieving for his wife the next day and he wrote in his letter that um, that he heard a, a comforting voice tell him not only was his wife safe and and in heaven but that God was thoroughly enjoying her company. He said that the, 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 that the message was so clear that he stopped and laughed out loud um, at that. 
because um, to know who Sharon was before Alzheimer's um, got to her, she was very engaging and, and, and outgoing and extroverted. And I can see where God would be thoroughly enjoying her company. And so I think of, decided to think of my, my loved ones who have passed on in that way, that, that now they are doing their, their thing that always made us laugh. They're doing that with God. How awesome is that? Not that I want to leave this world anytime soon, but when I do, I'm ready for that. To sit down and and draw pictures with God. Wouldn't that be awesome? To have him sitting side by side with you drawing some tangles. Because, you know, he is the creator of all pattern. So look at that. I just chit-chatting and filling up spaces. and I like that. Okay, so let's let's decide that these ones on this side of this S are further back. So I'm going to give this a nice big shade on this side. Ooh. I got a little carried away outside my box. That's okay, that's what an eraser is for. Where's my eraser? I do like a kneaded eraser because you can just like squish it into whatever shape and it doesn't leave all that eraser fuzz dust stuff. And it's easy to take off just those little bits that where you don't want it. Um how do I want to shade this? Do I want to shade the diagonals on this side? Or do I want to shade the S's? This side I wanted to shade the diagonals. So I know that. So that's where I'm going to put my, my pencil. I'm going to put it on the diagonals and then blend that. And that will really make that puffy stand out but how do I want to shape this I think I'm going to shade this side of the S instead which will do a different thing to the pattern Kind of like it looks like a knitted sweater or something on this side with this This is awesome. Something like that, and then you need to blend. I really want my other blending stuff that I dropped on the floor earlier. Okay. And remember, you're blending because your eye really, when you look at shadows, most of the time they're not crisp shadow. Even when they're all the way down like like if you see my finger and where my finger makes a shadow, see how it's like soft. Even this harder edge where the paper is making a shadow, right at the edge, right here, it's soft. And that's why you need to blend so that you're, um, you're seeing a soft line and not a harsh line where your shading and shadows are. 
because that's what your eye actually sees. So you want to replicate that on your paper by just softening the edge of where you're putting your shadow or your shading. And if you get a little carried away with your blending stump, don't worry about it. You can come back with your eraser and get rid of that tiny little bit of dark that you put where you didn't want it. Like right here. I can get rid of that. Just that little teeny bit right there. And you might not even have seen it, but I could see it. So it was bugging me. Pinch that a little more, make it a little more pointy. And I'm going to get rid of just on that S because I want that S to stand out and be nice and bright. Right there. Same thing right there. I got a little carried away. I should have probably used my smaller stump on these ones because they're tighter. Which is why I ended up with dark where I didn't want it, but I can just get rid of it like that. It's very subtle. Very, very subtle. Okay, so now on these I'm going to do the diagonal. I'm going to blend on both sides of that diagonal just a little bit. That will give it that puffy, puffy look that I really like on this tangle on the, on the sample. Oops, I'm out of frame. Sorry. across the diagonals and just blend on both sides of that line. This one will be on this side. You don't see it, but it's there. go. See how that made that puffy? I think that's cool. Now that one, oops, I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. It's got puffy on that side and, and more like a cable knit on this side. I really like that. Okay, so the name of this tangle, let's go back to my page, is Olin, O-L-I-N. I'm going to put it I'm going to sign it down here. Oops. O L I N. Okay, that's today's pattern. Uh, it took me a little longer than I had anticipated to draw because I think because of this. When anytime I make something in smaller scale, there's just more lines and it just takes longer to draw. So I hope you guys have had a really great Christmas, great New Year. And so I want you to go out. I want you to have a great day. Um, have fun. Enjoy yourself. Be a blessing to others, which is super important. If you can bless one other person during the day, uh, you've done your job. And uh, yeah, have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.